Hello, everyone, and welcome to Critical Praxis, week number 12. My apologies for last week. I ended up taking a last-minute break along with my co-contributors, and we've actually moved last week's topic all the way to the very end in December, hoping that we can get around to it. This month has just been crazy. But anyways, here in week 12, uh, our topic is really getting at this idea of what critical fat studies are. Uh, rather than uh, focusing on a particular reading, how does a critical take on fat studies or fatness inform your work? What is critical fat studies? What kinds of response do you receive from those who hear about critical fat studies? What role has the body played in your work regarding critical fat studies? Take the topic where you'd like. Now, I've uh, thought through this. Um, I am, uh, I would say that I'm a person who draws on and uses uh, critical fat studies in my own work in various capacities, not only as a mode of self-discovery and uh, I would say even self-liberation in some way, but also as a baseline understanding in terms of the way that power, uh, privilege, and oppression operate uh, through my work. So what is critical fat studies? Uh, critical fat studies, in my opinion, uh, takes the fat body or the non-normal uh, or non-normalized uh, or the non-normative thin body, fit body, uh, as the baseline and really marks that there's a certain level of privilege to a certain body that uh, is able to better or uh, uh, more easily perhaps uh, sit in a desk for a prolonged period of time based on size, that there's a certain expectation of what types of clothes can be um, readily available at a reasonable price in stores uh, like normal clothes or medium or average clothing. And it really gets at some of the systemic systems that, uh, for instance, maybe rhetorically frame uh, obesity as an epidemic uh, which is probably one of the most common manifestations, I think, uh, on an everyday basis that I'll hear, for instance, is that um, obesity is an epidemic, it's killing people. And uh, I guess that uh, as, as a baseline example that I tend to draw on uh, would be um, myself, for instance, as a runner, a long distance runner, who uh, remains rather large. Uh, I just don't think my body is getting much smaller than what it is. And that I have a an abnormally a uh, healthy body. Uh, I shouldn't say abnormally, I just have a really healthy body based on the amount of workout that I do, uh, the aerobics that I do, and then also uh, my vegetarian-ish diet uh, and the food that I take in. But whenever I go to the doctor's office, and I get weighed, I come into the category of obese every time. My, my BMI is, uh, which is a system, systematic uh, practice that's set up to pin certain bodies against other bodies, and it's completely arbitrary. It means nothing whatsoever. But we've learned to believe in the BMI as some sort of marker. So that whenever I go to the doctor's office, for instance, uh, if ever I'm, I'm ill, and that illness in some way can be connected to uh, what we would traditionally consider as a form of a weight problem, then what ends up happening is there's no other explanation except that it's because I'm overweight. So I've been struggling with, uh, for instance, really bad heartburn, chronic heartburn lately. And so the 100% explanation for that has been because I'm obese, as opposed to actually taking the time to look inside of my body. Uh, to really look at this. And so uh, recently when I had gone into the doctor for uh, this problem, they ended up doing some blood work on my body because they wanted to see how bad my cholesterol and everything was. Uh, when I went back a few, weeks a few weeks later to get that information looked at, the doctor was painfully surprised at how healthy I was and where all my vitamin levels, where everything was, and that everything was top notch in my system. And that's not to say that all fat bodies are healthy or that all thin bodies are uh, healthy. Um, but it is to say that this surface level, what we look at is the fat body, uh, there's a lot of baggage that goes with that. Culturally, the fat body, the body that in some capacity is larger than what we might consider a norm in some way, um, is looked at as diseased, as disgusting, as broken, as uh, also laziness, as a failed person who is not able to take care of themselves. This is a problem. Uh, critical fat studies is, uh, does the work, does the labor, really trying to rework those thought processes that pin the fat body as a malfunctioning or a bad body or a body that needs to be disciplined and looks at that body as a baseline and says this is just another type of body. That, as one campaign says, health uh, is at every size. Uh, one of the Tumblr posts that I came across says, uh, this is where there was kind of this exchange on Tumblr and I find this uh, really useful here. Desiring a body that society tells you not to desire is a subversive act. Fucking a body that society tells you not to fuck is a subversive act. Having a body that society tells you is undesirable and unfuckable is a subversive act. 
Now, I think that there is uh, something efficacious to connect this idea to the fat body, for instance. That let's let's look at it this way. If you desire a fat body, which society tells you not to desire, then that's a subversive act, that finding fat bodies attractive is subversive in some way. The second point, uh, fucking a fat body, which society tells you not to fuck, is a subversive uh, act. And finally, if you have a fat body, which society tells you is undesirable and unfuckable, then having that fat body is a subversive act. I would agree with this in many ways, in that having these bodies, having being a person who, for instance, is attracted to large bodies, um, you yourself, uh, uh, if you are a large body, attracted to other large bodies, that that itself, in and of itself, is in many ways a subversive act at the baseline level. Now, I think that there was a, w a worthy critique that was lodged against this uh, and, a, and a response to this where someone on Tumblr wrote, having sex with a person who belongs to an oppressed group isn't radical. Sex is an interpersonal act, not a political statement. People's bodies aren't commodities for our, uh, for your ally points. I don't want to be fucked because someone feels subversive because they fucked me. I want to be fucked because the person wanted to have sex with me. Don't fucking commodify me as a fuck toy you can feel radical for using. What the fuck is this queer culture one linear bullshit? Uh, I bring up that uh, uh, critique because uh, despite all of the heavy language that's being lodged there in this concern, I think it really gets at the weird space of being in when indeed uh, you have a fat body, which is subversive when you decide to maintain that body or you realize that maybe losing weight is not the ultimate goal. Something that I will personally uh, uh, share is that I still struggle with that. Body image remains a big issue with me because I still struggle with a lot of historical baggage of what my body should look like versus what it is and what its uh, actual size is. It's just something that I'm stuck with, that this is a body that uh, I have been given and that I work with. That for me, the act of sex, the act of even self-love in many ways, is in fact a very subversive act and is indeed intricately tied to politics. It's in fact a political move. It is a subversive political act to love your own fat body and to love other fat bodies. And for me, critical fat studies allows us to see that the worthiness of a body that's not thin is, is, is just as subversive and just as radical as falling in love with and loving and desiring sexually, uh, emotionally, psychologically, what have you any other non-normative body. And those bodies can come across in many different ways. The disabled body, which certainly intersects with uh, body size as well, particularly when obesity is viewed as a form of disability. And frankly, any other body that in some way is subversive um, to what, what Audre Lorde would call the mythic norm, which traditionally is understood as white, heterosexual, Christian, able-bodied, fit uh, men, uh, and so on and so forth, this kind of baseline uh, mythic understanding of what it is that we are in some capacity striving for. Um, another view of critical fat studies, and this will be my final example, is when we ask ourselves what bodies are allowed to be fat and what bodies are not. Uh, regardless of my trans identity, having male privilege and being read as a male the way that I am uh, affords me a certain level of being able to be fat in ways that, for instance, uh, those who are read as female or identify as women uh, and female do not have. So the luxury that I have is that despite how large I get, in many ways it's far more socially acceptable for my body to be read as overweight, as fat, what have you, than it is for a woman uh, who might be viewed as just being sloppy or lazy or what have you or not taking care of herself. Because there's a lot more leeway for men, and I think this is changing recently more so, but still holds true nonetheless, that men have a certain degree of being able to let themselves go in a way that maybe women don't. Um, and so I think that critical fat studies really asks us to look at the ways that fat bodies uh, intersect with race, uh, uh, with class, uh, with sexual orientation, with gender, with, with all sorts of different uh, dynamics uh, at this kind of macro and also a micro level. Uh, and I think that in terms of informing my own work, it means that in, in, in addition to looking at uh, positionalities of power in terms of other cultural locations like race, class, gender, sexual orientation, that body size is something also to attend to, equally important. In the coming weeks, we're going to look at one of these intersections of disability. And I think that together, these two ideas really, I, for me, manifest in my own life in very unique ways. Uh, that's all I have to say today, and I hope that um, we see you all next week as we move forward into Critical Praxis. We're into the last few weeks of this season, and please be sure to rate, comment, engage, and I will see you all later. Farewell.